I'll hop back in the pool. I said, oh, I played Jumping Piglet that previous game. It was that nice London game. Um, I said that I'll play a Ponziani. Okay, so this is going to be high-level Ponziani. Let's see how well prepared my opponent is. And so far, we're actually going into exactly what I showed in this recent lesson to Fundy. Um, the one time, or maybe the, it was one of the first times I played Ponziani against a GM in a tournament. My opponent played this line. Played a tournament in the Netherlands against, uh, back in 2016. Played GM, I don't know how to say his name, Projeezers? Dutch Grandmaster. I think he played exactly like this. I'll admit I'm I'm already out of preparation. I think I should just castle and carry on with life. Leave the tension. There's a nice pin happening. A6 is very logical. Yeah, so now I can take. It would give away the bishop pair, but I, mean, I don't think there's too many other great options. If I play this, I welcome knight b4. Bishop e2 looks too passive. And the prospect of taking knight c3. Yeah, let's do that. Another question is whether to trade queens, which I don't think I want to do. I guess I have to be ready for bishop d5. It's actually kind of annoying. The d5. And there's a line rookie one takes and then takes. Also have queen e2. No, queen e2, there's bishop c4. I'd have queen f5. Takes, takes. We trade everything. We'll have more space, but slightly damaged structure. That's an interesting decision. I think I should just play knight c3. Not spend too much time. Oh, I can address... Yeah, remind me after the game. I'll try and address a comment from whatever your name is. Okay, now bishop g5 looks nice. I'm just trying to go for quick development. And now if we trade... I'll be pressuring the bishop, also preventing casting because queen h7 mating ideas. Of course, I'm threatening to take and force black to bond cloud. And f6 is probably not too attractive. For example, takes, takes, and rookie one. Okay, so this is a line. Um, consider taking the bishop. I don't think it's necessary. I probably just take and then decide next move whether to take the bishop. <sighs> I mean, black's probably in the castle. Oh, we'll get some end game. I shouldn't be worse here. Like sometimes it's risky playing Ponziani against a strong player, where they'll be like very well prepared, but. I mean, this is probably close to equal, but still imbalanced. I have a li little bit more space with the pawn. Um, also a bit more development. H6 is a bit surprising. Because I was probably going to take the bishop anyway. I think I'll take and play f4.
maybe I should have considered this move, but okay, life goes on. Let's play rookie one and go for f5. I'm trying not to get too low on time here. Okay, f5, f6 looks nice. Even just f5. What is black going to do? Queen c4. But then I rook lift and get swole. Yeah, these pawns are really nice looking. So rook e4. Ah, rook e4, queen here. And I might lose a pawn. Wow. So I could play king h1. I could also play queen f2, which is a very useful looking move. So preventing checks along the diagonal. Also just trying to get to the king side to mate. And now rookie four is a probably a bigger threat. Rook e4 almost drops a queen. Black would have to move here. It's really close to a queen trap. Am I trapping the queen? Wait a minute. Rook e4, queen d3, rook d1. I don't see how black saves a queen. That's so crazy because the position is so open. But, oh, the queen has c6. Never mind. Let's play rook e4 anyway. I forgot the queen had c6. I'm just realizing I forgot to share the secret idea from that last game. Okay, I'll have a few things to address after this game. Okay, now I think the queen's trapped, unless I have another blind spot. I mean, of course, black can take, but then I have rookie one in the end and should be winning. Uh, oh, I have a blind spot. Or do I? Wait. Oh, wow, there's a funny line. So rook d1, queen takes e4. And then rook takes d8. Rook takes d8. Knight takes e4, rook d1. And then I lose back my queen. As just a fair trade, and I probably lose a pawn in the end. That's crazy. So maybe I'll play h3. Man, what a funny line. I wonder if I can play h3 and then how does black stop rook d1? Also have e6. Play h3. I make some luft. There's some cases where h3 supports the rook on g4 as well. Okay, so there's queen d7 here, which is a very passive move for black. Might be necessary though. I mean, there's also a5. The game plan is to get ready to play rook d1, just see what black is up to. Yeah, so now I should be considering these pawn moves. Maybe start with queen g3. This feels reminiscent of the first game I played against Jumping Pig Piglet, where it's kind of equal-ish opening, but I getting kind of a big attack in the middle game. So my threat with this move is to play Rook G4. Beware, Piglet has hoes. Has what? Wait. Hops. Oh, has hops. Oh, okay. 
That makes more sense. Because it can jump. It was really trying to make sense of that. I was thinking like a a garden hose. Anyway, okay. Uh this move, this move, this move, this move, this move. Oh, this move, this move, this move, this move. That's mating. Okay, let's do that. I also have ninety four coming. Oh, there's G5. And what is G5? Maybe I play Queen H4 first. Also, I have Rook D1 to consider. There's so many moves. I shouldn't take too much time here. Time is getting low. Yeah, I have to be aware of the piglet hops. So I play queen h4 first to prepare f6, and then that way this pawn would be sucked to um, defending h6. Potential mating square. King h7. I have this move. At this point, I'm just throwing everything at the king side. Throwing all the mud at the piglet. It's a mud fight. I feel like the piglet enjoys having mud thrown at it. But I enjoy throwing mud. It's a win-win. So I'm threatening to probably play this and then this, and there's going to be just everything targeted, including the king. Uh, where's my mate? Oh, is it really made in two? It's made in two. Oh, this is such a funny made in two. Queen h6. Black has three legal moves. If this is mate, if this is mate, and if king takes its mate. It's like the finish to uh, uh, Carlson Karyakin in 2016. Oh no, my queen. Okay, that was fun. Yeah, that was a nice way to finish off attack. I didn't see that coming until, of course, Rook H8 was played. Okay, hello to YouTube. I feel like there's Very a few nice. things to address. Did Rx G7 also work? Yeah, I mean, Rook G7 and Knight F6 were the first moves that came to mind, but um, once I saw Queen H6, it was it was clear, so I didn't really look further. Yeah, this is a crazy maiden too. Because you wouldn't expect this position to just be mate like immediately. Uh, rook g7 does not work. It looks like it should be working with all the attack, but apparently white is somehow better after takes an e6. Yeah, no way I would be finding e6 with all the different possible moves. Thank you, the musty kumquat. Oh, fun fact, if uh, if we look in the master's database, it's my name. I was telling the truth. But how do we pronounce these, this name? Pre I think I said Krajizers, but I think the J is silent. So maybe it's Prusers or Priesers. Um, first name Roland. Actually, fellow trust streamer. He goes by Monkey Chess on Twitch. We had a game, it was uh, the Leiden Open. It was actually my first ever tournament in Europe. And 
Yeah, it was during my Ponziani phase. I actually had like a better position at some point in this game. Yeah. So, there's some crazy moment I could have played Knight A4 and been winning. Um, unfortunately, I went on to lose that game. So, in the game I just played, we went for a slightly different line. Does the engine not like Queen C2? Uh, engine prefers other moves like this. Queen C2 is logical. You know, I guess this is like this is one of the problems with Ponziani, at least this line specifically, where if black's like really well prepared, engine does give a slight edge for black. Um, but as we saw, the position was still like okay to play. Yeah, after here, it's actually doing fine. Yeah, so I I guess I should show this line. Um, because I really wanted to trap the queen with rook d1. And the queen does look trapped here. But uh after queen takes e4, it's a crazy move. And if I take right away, then I'm losing because I have to block with my queen. If I take the rook first, it almost looks winning, but uh yeah, black can take, lose the queen, and then win it back. In the very end, there's knight c4. I think I'd just be worse here. Or it's just equal. Ah, uh, because I have knight c5 at some point. Anyway, I played h3, kept queens on the board, and I should show the uh the Carlson. Aryakin. So slightly different position, but same move. And same type of like made into queen sacrifice thing. So yeah, I guess in my position I had a few more attacking pieces. Carlson was a bit more of a minimalist. So yeah, in the Carlson game, uh Queen H6, and if G pawn takes, there's rook f7 mate, and if king takes, uh, rook h8 is mate. Cool idea.